Hey guys, it's Hussein again from ABI Engineering. In the previous two videos, we learned how to determine the winter design conditions both indoor and outdoor. And that is because designing any heating system demands having design conditions to base upon. It's very simple. No design conditions equals no design. Therefore, in order to have the previous lessons sink in, we will examine a simple yet beneficial case study. Let's see what our case looks like. Somewhere in Brooklyn, New York, a young lady by the name of Sarah has recently graduated from the School of Architecture. Sarah is a bright and creative young girl who plans on having her dream architectural design studio one day. For the time being, she will rent a new apartment where she will live in addition to temporarily using it as her design studio. Sarah will spend most of her time in this apartment on the work desk doing typical architectural design work. Sarah is also planning on installing a new radiator heating system which will help her to remain comfortable in the winter. This is where we come in. In order to do the heating system design, we must first identify what the design conditions should be. Let's try to implement what we've learned in the previous videos in this exercise. So we will approach such exercises as follows. We will first determine the indoor design conditions and then the outdoor design conditions. Starting with the indoor conditions, our aim is to determine the required indoor temperature and humidity. So the first step will be finding the comfort range. Then from this range, we, we will select the operating point. The range is affected by one, earth speed, two, activity, and three, clothing. In this exercise, solar mean radiant temperature is ignored. For air speed, from Sarah's plan, we understand that she wants to install radiators, and radiators, except for a few exceptions, have no means of forced ventilation. They are mainly static aluminum bodies. But to be exact, they produce minor air circulation, but due to natural convection and the temperature gradient across the room. But this generated air movement is negligible. Therefore, we can consider air speed to be zero. Moving on to activity, we know that Sarah will spend most of her time working and designing on your typical CAD software. Therefore, most of her time will be seated at a computer desk doing computer work. Finally, we have clothing. Since our knowledge of Sarah's preferred wardrobe is zero, we will have to assume the typical clothing of the majority of people in the winter season. Okay, now that what is required to determine the comfort range has been defined, let's head to the CBE tool. The default mode of the CBE comfort tool is set to ASHRAE standard 55 and the PMV predicted mean volt method, which is what we want. For the time being, we do not change the values of temperature and humidity until after the range has been determined. So first, we set the air speed, speed to zero. Second, we check for an activity similar to computer desk work. Opening the activity drop-down menu, we can see that out of the options given, typing is the most similar activity, therefore we select it and it returns a metabolic rate value of 1.1 mets. Finally, for clothing, checking the drop-down menu, we can see that our best option is typical winter indoor clothing at a value of one cloth. Directly, the software modifies the range according to the new set values. From this range, any point can be selected, but I try to stay away from borderline temperatures and very low or high humidity values. Although there is no lower limit to humidity according to the ASHRAE standard 55, there is a recommendation to stay above a dew point temperature of 2 degrees Celsius. For the upper limit of humidity, ASHRAE recommends staying below a humidity ratio of 12 grams of water per kilograms of dry air. What you can do is select the point in the center of the comfort zone since they generally produce good results and have a wider flexibility margin in both directions. Hover over the center with the mouse and in real time the tool will return in this part here all the air properties. Check the return humidity and temperature values and then input them back in the input section to get the resultant PMV 
at PPD. You can also check the dew point temperature and the humidity ratio at this point to avoid crossing over the recommendations. So let's do as instructed. Hovering over the center returns approximately an indoor temperature of 22.5 degrees Celsius and a humidity of 30%. We record these numbers and input them back in the input section and the tool directly places your point on the chart and returns the values of the PMV and the PPD. In our case, the PMV turns out to be minus 0.01 and the PPD 5%, which are excellent. The dew point temperature is 8.1 degrees Celsius and the humidity ratio is 6.7 grams of water per kilograms of dry air. Beautiful. Our indoor design conditions for Sarah's new apartment have been determined. An indoor design dry bulb temperature of 22.5 degrees Celsius and a design relative humidity of 40%. Let's move on to the outdoor conditions. To determine outdoor conditions, we need only the geographical location of the office to be studied, which we know from Sarah is Brooklyn, New York. As we learned in the previous video, let's head to the ASHRAE Climatic Design Conditions website. We locate Brooklyn on the map through simple mouse navigation, then right click in the center of Brooklyn. Directly, a number of close weather stations appear on the left. We'll choose the Central Park Station. The first table that appears that is titled Annual Heating and Humidification Design Conditions is the one we need. This right here under heating dry bulb 99th percentile is our heating outdoor design dry bulb temperature which is minus 8 degrees Celsius. For humidification we head to the humidity subtitle and select the 99th percentile values which are a dew point of minus 18.3 degrees Celsius, a humidity ratio of 0.8, and a mean coincident dry bulb temperature of minus 6.3 degrees Celsius. For wind speed, we will assume Sarah's apartment to be a properly sealed apartment, thus avoiding having the highest load from the infiltration as previously discussed, and therefore we will choose this part right here. The mean coincident wind speed at the 99.6% dry bulb temperature which is 4.4 meters per second. Remember, for maximum infiltration loads in poorly sealed houses, use the other value here shown as 8.5 meters per second. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. The design conditions have all been determined. The indoor conditions are an indoor temperature of 22.5 degrees Celsius and an indoor humidity of 40%. The outdoor conditions are an outdoor dry bulb temperature of minus 8 degrees Celsius, an outdoor humidity ratio of 0.8 grams per kilogram, a dew point of minus 18.3 degrees Celsius, and a mean coincident dry bulb of minus 6.3, a wind speed of 4.4 meters per second. Now we're all set to design Sarah's new heating system. But wait, we still haven't learned how to do heating design calculations. We'll make sure to check out my next videos where we will begin learning the heating design calculations step by step. As always, thank you all for your time. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hussein out.